We're coming to the close of round number two, and we'll be back with more right after this. Combination, and then here's the uppercut. Wow. And what did that do to Cecil Coffey? I guess not much. He's still really? there. Indeed. My. Oh, you talk about a chin of stone. Coffee's got one. This is round number three. It has been nine stops since the opening bell. They're heavyweights, Armstrong in white, Coffee in the black trimmed in red. You know, this is an example of two guys who are not well known in the heavyweight division, although Cecil Coffee better known. He fought a draw with Jose Rivalta back in 1984 before he took a couple of years off. Rivalta, you know, considered a top 10 heavyweight. But they're two good heavyweights, two guys who know what they're doing in the ring are in good condition and really are fighting as well as they can fight. Busy left hand by Terry Armstrong and Coffee very busy inside has really ripped Armstrong with some shots to the body. Great uppercut by Coffee. They both have excellent uppercuts. Coffee weighs 208 and three quarters, and that's about a 30-pound drop, isn't it, from the last time you saw him, or at least a 25-pound drop. Right, really, and, and uh, our viewers we may remember him as a, when he had two draws in a row, he drew with Andrew Stokes and Jose Robot. If he had been in this kind of shape in those fights, I guarantee you he'd have come out a winner. But Busy look at, left hand. Look Great at the left Armstrong hand. jab. I'll yeah. tell you, a very nice weapon for Terry Armstrong. Terry from Cincinnati, moving out to L.A., and I'll tell you, he could get his boxing career in gear if he keeps fighting like this, win, lose, or draw. Throws an overhand right that scores. Armstrong in a bit of a crouch. Waves that right hand around menacingly and catches one on the side of the chin. As Cecil Coffey drives him back in the corner where they go into a clinch. A minute remaining here in round number three. Coffey again working to the body. Well, I tell you, for heavyweights, they're busy, are they not? Very busy. And whether they can continue this pace over the course of this fight for eight rounds remains to be seen. Well, they are just ripping each other with some heavyweight shots. Coffee in black, Armstrong in white. Scheduled for eight rounds. See, Armstrong now really wanted to tie Coffee up on the inside and get to that, the jab. He just walks into that jab and keeps right walking right straight ahead hard to discourage banging away to the body trying to work that uppercut banging away with the right hand and armstrong grabs and holds on and the body shots may not look pretty and may not look as beautiful as that solid shot to the jaw but i tell you as the minutes and the rounds go by do they take their toll? And they are right now, I think, on that man, Terry Armstrong. The first thing you can do, you're backing up, backing up all around the guy. When you got him, you stop, you throw that right hand at this guy, you're not throwing that right hand. When he throws a right hand, you got to counter with a right hand and put something behind it. That advice coming in the corner of Terry Armstrong across the way for Cecil Coffey. It's a very quiet corner. Nobody's saying anything. Murphy Griffith in there, the former trainer, former trainer of Gray Boo Boo Man City. But I want you to go home. And Cecil Coffey on the inside, a very effective fighter. We talked about the uppercut being a weapon for both boxers. There is Cecil Coffey's uppercut. That was early in the round. Brings him out for round four. How do you got this score now? I've been so busy watching it. Dead even, huh? Got it even at 29-29. And you know, it's interesting to me. Now, there's Coffey using his own jab. And I think the more he would do that and jab his way, and he would nullify the jab of Terry Armstrong. Put the solid right hand right over his jab. Landed right up high on the forehead. Armstrong scores with another. And a right-hand lead by Armstrong scores again. You know, it's a dilemma. Oh, good jab by Coffey. You know, it's a dilemma for Cecil Coffey. He's getting better boxing skills. He's in shape to do it more. And yet he knows his stock and trade is still the inside fighting. So sometimes he finds himself caught between the two styles. 
on this round he's jabbing very well and Armstrong has not jabbed quite as well although now Terry came back into it with that jab how much more confident though Susan Coffey is in ripping his shots when he gets on the inside indeed even though he didn't fight badly from the outside in this round Terry Armstrong not as adept to deal with him in there as he is when he's on the outside jabbing a five punch combination by coffee Armstrong comes back with the right a left and the right back comes coffee stepping in trying to work to the body right hand by Armstrong well, left this, hand by Armstrong. This is a grueling fight. You know, that's a word I seldom use. It's, it's really kind of a cliche, but in this case, that's exactly what it is, grueling. The body shots of coffee, the good jabs, and the combinations of Terry Armstrong, both fighters giving everything and landing big shots. Armstrong has worked almost exclusively to the head, and coffee yeah. has liked working to the body better. He's been effective outside, but not nearly as much, and a better target at this uh, range for Armstrong but inside he's very very good exactly and there's Armstrong coming back with three straight jabs just when you think coffee's taking control of the round so you know uh, we were talking earlier today and then seeing you in the ring again tonight with that little piece of tape we had and watching these men yeah. how enervating a sport this is really and is. to maintain it into the fourth round and almost now right. through four rounds at this pace is almost beyond description now Bernstein you forget it I hadn't been even playing in the ring for about 18 years uh, some amateur fights and you get in there and you realize and this fight epitomizes that we're coming to the end of round number four and both men feeling the effects of what has been a non-stop slugfest we'll be back to see about round five after this Coming out for round number five, it's scheduled for eight rounds. These are heavyweights, that Cecil Coffey in the black trunks, trimmed in red, Terry Armstrong in white. It has been a non-stop battle of attrition between these two since the opening bell. Coffey's had the best of it inside. I can't remember that Armstrong has thrown five shots to the body out. Everything has been to the head, and he's scored very effectively. Yeah. Now, this coffee, see the jab of Cecil Coffee. It wasn't evident earlier because Armstrong was winning the battle of the jabs. Now it's there. Armstrong is slowed a lot. You know, we may be premature, but you're taking the words out of my mouth. It could be those body shots have slowed him down now. Look at Coffee at long range. Armstrong with that left hand, but he's missed with a couple of them. But now he comes back. That one kind of a pawing left hook, though. Good oh, right. Wow. Solid left by Armstrong. Give, you know, give Terry Armstrong credit. He has absorbed some tremendous punishment. Look at him. He's throwing good combinations. He's in there battling with Coffee. Oh, my. Wow. He may have Coffee hurt. He nailed him with a solid left and a right. And another one. And a right hand. His corner between rounds was saying, throw the right hand and then throw it again. You've got to throw more than one. You tell me how Terry Armstrong is 4-4. Four four. I don't know. Figure that one out. Who did he fight? Godzilla and those <laughs> no, other... No. I'm telling you, he's looking good. The first Marine Division or something? Did he take so. them all on or what? Because Cecil Coffey is, you know, is a good, is not a bad fighter, and Cecil Coffey's fighting as well as. We